your, your idea is to integrate everything. It's not to, not to be a separate thing. Like, okay, this is what we do when we have a gun. This is what we do when we have the blade. This is what we do when it's just our hands. And in keeping that separation, you know, really, really hurts people in the transition when they need something or, or they don't have something. And I just think that that consistent principle is really a, a unique aspect of what you guys do. I've never had a time in my professional life where Americans have been more concerned about their own self-protection. Okay, so we are now to the third part and final part of my interview with Frank Wendell, and it's getting interesting now. So we're going to transition. We talked about what it's like to train the professionals that he's been training, uh, the, the top line operators, some of the different differentiations there. And then what I, what I wanted to do for this last part was we transitioned into the idea of, hey, how would you train family members? How would you train a brand new client? You know, somebody has no training whatsoever. What's important? And he brings up lots of great concepts during this, uh, this, this you know, part of the interview. And then he, a, a key concept is the idea of shoot, move, communicate. And he, he elaborates a little bit on that. And again, you know, understand, you know, we are talking about everything from brain and body and integrating tools and the, adva the advantages of having tools, especially if you are a smaller person, a physically weaker person, um, how you can train to be extremely effective um, using tools. And it's very important. So again, the information that we go over in this part of the interview is super relevant. If you have uh, young daughters, you know, if you have, uh, you know, kids, if you're, if you're thinking of getting back into training and you, you really kind of want to understand, okay, what's important, what's not important. You know, this is a great segment for you. Also, I cannot more highly recommend that if you are in the market for an incredible blade to carry for your everyday carry, Frank has a variety of them that are great that he makes each one individually and um, they're highly prized but understand these are operational blades meaning he makes them for people that actually end up having to use them you know and uh, it will serve you very well if you uh, make the investment and i just you know want to say again having him come on was really cool and uh, i hope you appreciate the third and final part of my interview with frank wendell now now we're into the point to where somebody wants to train so somebody doesn't have any training whatsoever um, you know, they're not, not an old bastard like me, but, but, you know, a guy has, has a, a couple of trainable years left in them, you know, somebody yeah. in their, in their twenties or something, how would they, you know, what, what would you, what would you look at? And also women, uh, getting trained, how would you, what's your approach on, on, um, you know, women? Cause a lot of, a lot of people are just, uh, are really worried about their daughters, really worried about, you know, um, you know, the violence that's going on in the world right now. Um, and then also just, just what. What would be your ideal if it was if it was one of your children if it was one of your you know nephew or somebody like that how would you want to guide them ultimately if you if you could design the whole program for them what would you give advice to people listening yeah so coming from a guy that has two daughters that are grown um we we've gone through a um a training program um here um first was to scare boyfriends and the second part was to um give them a sense of being capable. So basically, um, you know, a, a tool in somebody that's physically less, um, capable is a good thing. Um, to understanding like, you know, my daughter and my, both my daughter and my, the, the kids and the wife both, um, know how to use a blade. Um, they know targeting, um, they both know how to use a firearm. Um, they have a they have a relationship with physical violence, you know, with um, throwing elbows and that sort of thing. Um, and all that does is that opens up the doorway to produce a tool. Because um, if they're throwing an elbow, like there's some serious stuff going on. Um, and other than that, um, if you're if you're able to do it, get a couple uh, get a couple Malinois that will show that will uh, keep people away as well. Um, yeah. Other than that, um, so um, that training program for 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 folks that pathway, um, if if uh, 
if, if a 20 year old was looking to get into this or, or start training seriously, um, you know, first, first thing that I would give them advice is, you know, you should, um, train to be physical, like right? So you should have the understanding of how to move people around, how to control people. Um, and then you can add on striking and all the other stuff with that. But first is understanding how to move people around. Second, or in that is having the physical capability to do that, right? Through, through training, physical training. Um, once we get there, it boils down to the three main things to shoot, move, and communicate. Um, understanding each one of those. So shooting, we kind of were talking about. Uh, movement is such a key pivotal thing in um in the whole realm of um you know self-protection and then communicate learn how to understand to communicate with somebody your family member or somebody else both verbal and nonverbal, and understand both of those characteristics coming from somebody else verbal and nonverbal communication so important um and then it goes down the line um you know, way down there on the line, I would say, or, you know, after shoot, move and communicate, I would then put in some sort of um, understanding how to produce violence. So physical violence with just hands, like um, understanding how to throw a good elbow, understanding how to, and you can take that as far as you want, but you have to get that, those key pieces, learn three elbows, learn how to do those from every position, not so much standing flat footed, understanding how to throw them hard um, to incapacitate somebody. That's the name of the game. And then some sort of stand-up grappling, some sort of other stand-up striking if you want to do it. And then some ground grappling stuff if you wanted to do that. And then move into medical. I'm not a huge medical guy, um, but it's something that should, like I usually fall asleep during the medical thing. It's so bad, <laughs> but just something I'm not, like I like to pull people's arms off rather than put them back on. So it kind of goes against like my, but that's me being juvenile, of course. Um, so, but basically uh, after the medical is some sort of drive because we're in our vehicles or, you know, that mobility piece would be that transportation piece, whether it's learning how to understand how to drive a dump truck or, you know, a snowmobile doesn't, you know, getting that, could you operate that vehicle, you know, if you had to. You know, right. and for a 20 year old, they might not even know how to operate a standard, which is part of um, that was part of the prequel of one of my daughters uh, when she brought a, a boy over. He had to know how to drive a standard. That's awesome. know how to, yeah. yeah, there's a <laughs> there was a, there was a rough time there <laughs> finding a, finding a kid. Does it, yeah, it will. It's, what's interesting is like like you talked about training, but you also talked about some practical stuff, you know, can you drive these cars? Have you ever thought, you know, if you had to do any, any and something, you know, what are you capable of doing? What are you capable? Of? Do you know how to operate a motorcycle? Do you know how to, you know, do any of these things? And again, I think people get caught up with the idea that um, you have to be perfect at something. And, and the idea is you don't have to be perfect. You just have to be aware and you have to be able to get the job done. And, right. and so many people limit themselves because they say, well, I don't have time to, um, you know, to, to learn how to, to, to drive a, you know, a, a commercial driver's license or anything like that. It's like, that's not the idea, but you can take a weekend course. You can go do something. You can get your buddy who has a truck to teach you how to do it. Um, there, there are things beyond just the physical that, you know, or practical things that I, I think are kind of lost today because everybody's caught up in the technology of everything and everybody's caught up in their phones. Um, they don't realize we live in a physical world and you got to be able to operate in that physical world. 100%. And to, to take what, you know, two on Tom constantly says, and it echoes, it pretty much is, there's a hardware and software. So many people are interested in the hardware, like, what's the next thing I can buy, rather than what's the application of that? And how can I mentally understand how to use it to its best capability? So there's a lot of software, everybody loves to talk about hardware. Um, but it's the software is <clears throat> why but it's just like you kind of you like you wanted to know software about blades. It's like, yeah. where's the software there? Why? Why is this? And it's excellent. You know, that's forever a student type of thing, you know, not being an end user, like understanding, like, man, why is oh. it like that? 
the shape like that. Oh know? yeah, my whole I, my whole background part of you know connecting with you guys uh, was basically just whatever I could puncture in somebody. It was I wasn't really I really didn't educate myself on blades per se, yeah. and it's been really interesting learning. You know, um, I just I, I, a lot of a lot of my stuff came from. Uh, um, be introduced to a prison background uh, and, and their, their approach to it, which is very utilitarian, very, you know, and useful and very target specific. They really understand where to go on the human body. Um, but what was interesting was to learn the design of the blade and what and, and why it was designed that way. Just what you went over at the very beginning of understanding where the point is, is just key stuff that um, people just now I, now I look at things completely different, you know, when I when I'm looking at something, especially next time I'll go to one of the shows, I'll, I'll be looking at a lot of stuff and just seeing what lines up what doesn't you walk, you walk past a lot of tables. <laughs> that's what I heard. Yeah, Tom was cracking me up with that. He, he says it's one of those things he loves to do is just go by and see how many lousy knives there are. Um, but but yeah, you, you guys, it, it, what's, what's nice about it, though, is everything that you do. Uh, you know, that I've seen in, in your, 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 your idea is to integrate everything. It's not to, not to be a separate thing. Like, okay, this is what we do when we have a gun. This is what we do when we have the blade. This is what we do when it's just our hands and, and keeping that separation caught, you know, really, really hurts people in the transition when they need something or, or they don't have something. And I just think that that consistent principle is really a, a, a unique aspect of what you guys do. You're creating a conflict that doesn't need to be there by separate, by in that inner interior or that inner conflict makes hesitation and hesitation is bad. And if it can be, if it can flow and from one thing to another without, with, with subconscious activity, you're that much near that much more capable, you know, much more capable. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, that's awesome, man. Um, yeah, you know, Frank, we've covered uh, we've covered most of what I wanted to cover. You just you're you're great, man. You're right to the point, and that's that's <laughs> un, some people I have to like really drag it out, but you you got to it right away, which I really appreciate. Um, do you want people like like uh, I, I know you're very busy with what you're doing right now. Um, I just want to make sure that people respect you know what what you're what you're focusing on these days. Um, if they wanted to reach out to you. Uh, for for a knife order or something like that um that that's okay on the training side i was talking about the training because of what you're doing and 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 who you're involved in not from the idea of like letting the general public think that that's available to them or anything but the one thing i would like to 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 add on the training that i think could help people on is um i've seen in a lot of your stuff you make really good use of solo training and the use of uh, various uh, dummies and and uh, you know uh, training training aids. Could you talk a little bit about that? Because people use that as an excuse of why they can't train. I don't have my training partner. I can't do so. Therefore, I can't do anything. But I've noticed. I was just watching some of the drills that you do and everything. It's just it, it got me rethinking on how I'm going to use some of that equipment. So you know, it, it came from me using that same excuse, man. Um, you know my training partners, like at one time I had eight training partners, you know, high level training partners, and you need to have that many. Um, and basically, you know, life happens, marriage stuff and, and like, Hey, I can't come tonight. Can't come tomorrow. Can't come this. And this was a long time ago when I, I, I just started like, man, what am I going to do? Um, and, and then it was, well, you know, you have, you have a baseline. Okay. Now let's put it into a system and put it in some sort of solo training that you can do. So it's not wasted. Right. Um, to be honest with you, I've forgotten more stuff than I've learned in, in the combatives uh, end of things. Um, this is why teaching, this is why I like to teach so much because um, it draws from that memory and it draws from that application standpoint. Oh yeah this is why I'm teaching you this. This is the, this is the fifth time that I've done this on somebody that actually worked. And that's kind of what we used to baseline a lot of stuff on is, you know, doing things. Did it work? Did it not work? Did not work. Okay. We're not doing that anymore. You know, right. may try it, but going back to the solo training, um, it's a way to stay active. It's a way to continuously build on that 
learning that, um, uh, you know, that subconscious consciousness, you know, to being, you know, without saying muscle memory, it's, it's to learn all those skills with just with a training dummy or whatever. I know how I got, I know how to do a certain amount of throws. I can do them on the dummy. Um, you know, my group that, that trains with me, man, they have other things to do than train. Like yeah. they, they, they provide for the family. So if I throw a guy, you know, even on a crash pad and he blows his back out and he can't work the next day, kind of a, a black eye on me. Right. He can't family. Right. And he's laying on the couch, not providing. So it's very easy nowadays. All you have to do is go to the mailbox and get money, but that's political stuff. <laughs> but just this fact that his goal or his reason is down there is to be able to perfect it, protect his family. Um, and now I hurt him. Okay. Well, I've defeated that purpose. So my training or my uh, evolution in training has changed quite a bit from the meathead sparring, you know, yeah. before would hurt you now it's like okay there's this order of effects there that i need to follow um so training so as far as training like it went on a tangent again i always do that um it's called getting punched in the head too much so uh so heavy bag um a you know some sort of grappling dummy by the lightest one that you can um because everybody buys the heaviest one and then it sits over in the corner because it's like holy shit that's like it's really heavy that's and worse. you can't do it so you buy the lightest one. Everybody does yeah. it. Everybody. I have a video series on how to pick out a grappling dummy, if you can believe it. Uh, <laughs> so grappling dummy and then some sort of airsoft Sims works well. You can do it in the house and stuff like that. If you have a training area, what I've done over the years is constantly um, I've created a, a training environment either at my house or somewhere very close. So I'm able to bring people in. That's one of the key things that, that keeps guys not training is man. I got to travel an hour and a half. Well, that okay. turns to, you know, three hours of travel. That's three hours of dead time. Now, what can we be doing in that dead time? Well, we could be listening to an audio book and, you know, getting in the correct mindset stuff, or you can bring that unit closer, you know, whether either you're hosting, having guys come over or, you know, it's like field of dreams. You know, if you build it, they will come type of thing. Right. Same here. Um, and this has gone on, oh man, 15 to 18 years I've done this with having a place to train right here, you know. Um, and we do go out to other gyms and stuff like that. But basically the, the baseline is all, all within reach, you know, right down from my gym to everything. Everything is in, I have no, takes a lot of discipline to do that though. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, to just get up and go, okay, I need to do this. I need to do that. I need to work on like everything needs to have some forethought and some um, correct LOT to, to steal their PSYOP saying um, is to be mapped out and then absolutely analyzed what you're doing, why are you doing it without going down too many rabbit holes and then to talk to your peers about it. Hey man, I'm doing this. What are you doing? And then that spawns data. We collect data. I'm getting this. I'm getting that check why are you doing this you're wasting your time check we don't like it's how, it's how it is but keeping that keeping that training alive through me being able to use bob with arms and bob without arms and i'm able to do things still to that i can do not to real people anymore right because you, know, you bust them up you know then you don't have any training partners and it's come so yeah i mean there's a whole there's a whole thing and, it, and it's here is where you can get most of your ideas. You know, it's, it's right up here. Um, as long as it's correct visualization, as long as it's not fantasy world, you know, um, if that's correct in your head, you can, put, you can map that out. I really need to work on this. So I'll map out my training in a year time span with a specific target that I need to work. Now I won't go down the rabbit hole. I'll still maintain 80% on everything else. Right. But I don't like I don't get too fixated on it. I used to get extremely fixated, but I've worked myself had help with good mentors not to do that. Yeah. So. You know, I it, it's funny. It, it, the older I get, the more I'm, I'm very 
I'm very specific about my training and what I will and won't do to myself anymore. Um, I seven years since I had my last concussion, so that's a good thing. Um, but, I, but you know, one of the things I, I, I did see was I liked some of the training, um, the physical training aids I saw you have. You have, you, I saw in, in your thing, you use Bulgarian bags, which I think are yeah. excellent. Um, yeah. It looked like you had a mace, um, you know, some, some sort of mace training, stuff like that. Yeah. I find that stuff, I, I like it. First of all, it's just fun to use that kind of stuff. You know, I've got a ton of maces, I've got all my kettlebells, I've got everything. But the reason I like that is, I find, especially with the movement patterns that you use in training, you know, those, those, uh, training aids mimic a lot of those movements and really kind of, kind of help. But was it a specific reason that you started using those where, were they integrated? It, I mean, yeah, man, it's basically, um, like I will still lift weights, old, old fashioned weights, um, because, uh, I can't let it go. I just can't let it go. So I'm not going to fight it. So uh, I, I, like you just said, I, I've integrated that transverse movement stuff, that stuff. Um, you can get it with a training dummy, you know, with, with a, a, one of those grappling dummies. Um, that's the correct way, not too heavy. Um, or the Bulgarian bag is phenomenal. Like that's my new favorite showpiece. Um, because um, the reason why I like the Bulgarian bag, and I even give it the slight edge over the mace bell because um, it opens your shoulders up. And like uh, right now, I am the Tin Man. Like if I sit, like probably I'll uh, break when I get up after this little interview here because I just I just lock all up. Part of it is because I'm undisciplined in stretching, <laughs> and yeah. part of it is I'm older and I lack mobility now. It's my own fault. So now I'm trying to correct that. So it's what it is, you know? Um, yeah, no, it, it, it's, it's great. I mean, it's, it's, it was cool to see because, uh, it, it trends that, you know, those are, those are, those are items that I noticed actually help me because you know, I still do that. I, I'm an old iron head and I still, I still go and I still kid myself. I can lift. And, uh, if I can, if I can lift without breaking myself, I'm, I'm really happy. Um, Same. but, uh, it, but those things that I've noticed that, 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 the, the the transverse movement that you get out of those, those bags. I wish I had discovered that type of training earlier in my life. Could have, could have really used it. Um, oh, but it's outstanding 100%. stuff, man. hundred percent. Yeah. That I'll tell you about the Bulgarian bag. You know, he sends you like a little chart that you can do like a bunch of movements on, you know, whether it's uh, increasing an arm throw or, you know, it's practical movements. Um, I'm used to it. And I just got, I just got done doing a Bulgarian bag workout before we get on here. Um, and it's just phenomenal, you know, and I bolt it on to whatever else I'm, you know, doing the meathead lifting stuff, you know, yeah. I just bolt, you know, yeah, you know, it's easy to add one or two of those in, into the mix, yeah. which is great. You know, I to do that. Found, I found like, if I just do kettlebells, I go insane. If I just do bells, I go insane. It's like, it just doesn't work for me. Um, and maybe that's because of the years of just, you know, the, the lifting, you know. Um, but I just, I won't accept just doing that. Yeah. No, I I, no, I understand that aspect of it. What, um, so what is your, uh, how, how often, just in, in general, how often are you having to, are you having to travel to, um to train and do some of the work that you do are you are you on the road a lot um it's intermittent you know COVID thing it was in intermittent um it's um i try to be home as much as possible but it's 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 what it is um yeah. and it's usually short legs uh you know the 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 days of me going away for two or three months are are over um yeah ideally um but you know uh you have to excuse the malinois are out so they're barking i'm sure you can agree um so yeah uh as far as travel training um i love i love to do it like it's a it's it's it rates right up there with making blades it's a passion i like i like the train i like the aspect of um guys got you know that uh the transference of knowledge you know yeah um and I, I learned just as much teaching people as, you know, they learn from me. Like I, I am a student of like watching people and learning and learning how to do it better in the most efficient way as possible. Um, that's why that that's, that's why, you know, with STG, 
it's it's always an evolution. It, it always something's changing. The 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 history's still there, and the and the baseline or the fundamentals are still there, but it's changing, and that's what draws me to it so much. It, it's that constant. Your feet are going to sleep. Okay, we need to do something different. You know. Yeah, so. that 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 was the one thing I got away. Uh, what I thought was great about your group was Tom said in his interview with me. He said that uh, when he went to start to go work with the military again and, and seek it out saying he wanted to, that's what he wanted to do. But his instructor told him, he goes, okay, he goes, I want you to do that. He goes, well, how? And he goes, no, no, it's going to evolve. That, I thought that was so, that just tells, I don't know, I don't know that man. And I know he's not around anymore. That tells me everything I need to know about him because that's just the confidence that you just have in people. And you sit there and you go, Hey, listen, you got the principles, you've got everything but you don't know, you don't know what, what these guys are going to need and you're going to figure it out. And I think that's, what's so cool about your group is you guys are taking real world feedback. You're helping guys in real situations and you're changing things up. If something doesn't work, you're not afraid to shit can it and, and go right away. So you guys don't, you don't hold on to legacy, you know, in a, in a in negative way. Yeah. But Pahama Tuhan was, um, I, which who I've never met, but I have taken, I have taken the stuff that Juan Thomas taught me and, and um, his, his sons have taught me and I've taken him very seriously. His, his formulas are amazing. Um, and here's the deal. They can be applied to anything, whether it's business, uh, you know, fighting is just the, the cool part of it. The, the business aspect, how to run your life aspect, the protocols that are involved in that keeps your nose clean, um, keeps you on a better path, you know, in life. Um, and it's just, it's amazing that, that, that man came up with these methodologies and, and I'm sure in, and he quoted the 10,000 hands, you know, um, and I'm not sure if, if John Tom talked about the 10,000 hands, mm -hmm. it, you know, when you draw your blade, you know, that 10,000 hands are drawing that with you, meaning, the evolution or the timeline that was gone. Um, and, you know, I may be speaking out of turn saying that, but it's still, it, it amazes me, you know, um, and it's a very solid, solid drive for sure. Yeah, no, no, I got a lot of respect uh, uh, for your guys work and, and what you're doing. And uh, I've learned a hell of a lot just, you know, in the short time, I've got to meet a lot of you and, and talk and, um, you know, which is good, because I love new approaches. And I just, I always respect groups that have rock solid principles, but are open to changing methods as need be. And that to me is a unique, a unique thing. And that's why I encourage people to check out, you know, groups like yourself and, uh, and, and people and, and get what they can. If they're going to need a blade, th th listen, guys, I'm just telling you, first of all, it's cool stuff. I've got, you know, I'm going <laughs> to post all my stuff that I got, uh, that I got made. Um, but just the the process of going through, and you're pretty good. You let you kind of, you let people know, like like with me, you gave me a couple of pictures as it's being developed and stuff like that. If you got the time, you're you're really good about getting back to people on stuff. Uh, so I, I thought that was great. But listen, I appreciate this. We were able to dance around a lot of things. I think people understand. Listen, we're we're not trying to be sly. We're just respecting privacy and we're respecting you know you know people and 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 groups that are training. You. Um, People know enough about me and, and who I brought on that they understand what we're talking about. But I really appreciate you taking the time to, uh, you know, to have this interview and also kind of share share your knowledge. Because like I said, you may have only been doing this for five years, but man, I can't believe the number of people that are talking about you. And um, once I posted mine, I got some calls from guys I hadn't heard from in a long time. And uh, they're saying, oh, yeah, I didn't know you knew Frank. And I go, well, I don't. I go, my buddy introduced me to him. They go, oh, yeah, yeah, great stuff, you know. So you've, you've got a very good reputation in the community. And uh, I hope I hope we get to meet sometime uh, in person, you know, uh, in the near future. Yeah, 100%. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I'm absolutely humbled, uh, humbled by uh, the good words. And uh, I appreciate it, you know. Awesome, man. Well, keep doing what you're doing, my friend. And uh, we will uh, we'll talk again soon. Right on. Thank you very much, Tim. All right, man. And that concludes my interview with Frank. Again, um, you know, we just ended up the idea that, you know, just, just the idea of groups that constantly look at their methods. You know, if there's a consistency that I could encourage anybody is when you're looking for an instructor, 
you know, look at something they did 20 years ago, if, they, if they've been around that long, and then look at something they're currently doing. If they're doing the same stuff with no variance, no improvement of the methods, you probably want to go somewhere else, especially in this day and age. Things rapidly change, and you need to be able to change your methods and your, your, make sure that your principles apply to the current threats. And that's what's so great with a group like Cyoc Tactical. Um, and then on the commercial side of things, you know, if you need really good tools, you can't do better than Frank. You know, he's in a very short amount of time captured a very elite market of operators that just rave about his tools. And um, I would encourage you to go to his website, his Instagram page, and uh, check out, you know, all the different uh, products that he has. They're just, uh, they're just outstanding and the quality is just amazing. So again, um, I hope you enjoyed this. Make sure that you hit the notification bell, subscribe, share this with your friends. And again, you know, remember, if you need the unvarnished information, the stuff that we can't say on YouTube, please go to timlarkin.com, sign up for the free masterclass. We can give you everything without having to worry about algorithms or minders looking at our our stuff and worrying if somebody's getting offended. Um, when it comes to your own self-protection, you want to be offended. You want to have real information that jars you, that motivates you, that makes you want to get better and get out there and train. So again, until next time, stay safe.